Len Koic, Tolosa and Kip Yeager. Kip Legat in the yellow moving down the outside, and it is quick. Well, it's not quite as quick as they asked for, but it is 2.40, and that's quick enough, Tim. Obviously, that's eight minute pace uh, if they were to keep that uh, perfectly on that. I think uh, the way I'm looking at this, though, isn't it? They, they're gathering, and it looks as though maybe that pace isn't as quick as Kipruda wanted, and he's maybe saying there to Kipsan, come on, push on, push on, get me away from the nest. Look at him looking behind. He's tripping over the pacemaker. He wants to move on here. He's ready to run fast. He's not getting enough help. Maybe Kipsan just beginning to stretch out a little bit, which is good. Uh, Kipruto, you know, he hurdles well, he takes Barry as well, uh, Kipruto, and he's, as you said, he's got all of that speed and ability. He probably is that part of his career now where he needs someone to, uh, to really push on, particularly here tonight. Well, what he needs most of all is a pacemaker who's prepared to attack the clock and go out on the time that he's requested. I mean, running into the back of a pacemaker and be glancing around is ridiculous when you're trying to go somewhere near world record speed. Tamberi again at 2.39. I do apologize because we have seen this, which I suspected. That was his second attempt. We've seen this twice. With a bit of luck, we might see him clearer. Because um, you're probably well aware that that's what the big cheer was on was earlier on. This is Spatakova in the javelin. First round, 61-50. Managed to get into that put her into the top four. Three more throws, and now we've got the better marking out there as well. So Spatakova. That looked more like 63, 64 meters. Kaladovic leading with that first round throw, 65, 62. The new European champion, Mitchell of Australia, lying in second place. It won't be too far away from that. Not quite far enough. 63, 34. Spitakova in third. Back to this steeplechase. That first kilometer, 240, 54. Well, it was three and a half seconds out of what was uh, beyond what was requested and. Wasn't great pace making, I have to say. And uh, Kipruto might have a race in his hands now instead of a time trial. Well, we should be applauding that as they come through in front of us with three laps to run. Paul Kipsiele Koex, that little barrel chested, small stature in third place. Just trying to hang on to Kipruto and has another glance over his shoulder. Kipiego in the orange in fourth place. And in the uh, yellow, back in fifth place. Just stuttering at that barrier going into the back straight. He's got to go now, Tim. You know, he's looking around, he's hanging around, the pace is dropping. If he's in that sort of shape, go. You know, it, he's, he's, still, he's got two and a half laps to go, last thousand meters. They're really good athletes, the world-class front-running, attacking athletes. Look at his, he's, he's, he's blaming everybody else. Have a go, go on. Go on, Consensus, have a go. Show us what you can do. He's now got the rest of the field there with him. He's going to blame the pacemaker. But to be fair, if, he, if this was so easy for him, he should have gone past him a lap ago and got on with it. Well, I agree, Steve. He's won four Diamond Leagues already this summer, each of them at a canter, frankly. If you look at his times through those four meetings, 8.05, 8.02, 8.01, and then eight minutes with just a few hundreds he won in the Birmingham Diamond League a few weeks back. So this for him is relatively easy. He goes through in around six minutes. He's the, uh, not going to break eight minutes tonight and that's disappointing because the conditions are perfect it's very very still it's a warm evening 23 degrees centigrade the pacemaking i do believe let him down but that lap was a 67 i mean he must know and of course that's not 400 meters as well we know we're taking the barriers the water jumps on the inside that's why he was shrugging his shoulders but there's no one to blame i mean coach is not going to do it for him Kipiego is not going to do it for him um so it's up to him now he's got to win the race first of all and I think maybe that's what he's decided to do, is make this a race, first and foremost. And uh, if you like, a simulation of what he might yet meet in the Olympics. Remember, no pacemakers come the Olympic Games. He's got Paul Kipsiele Kovic beside him, who's a fierce flat racer. He's a 7.33 man on 3,000 flat, 13.05 at 5,000. But he is 34 years old now, Paul Kipsiele Kovic, side by side down the home straight. That says it all, doesn't it? Nobody's been really prepared to commit. And Barnum is Kipiego. Just uh, slots a pass, Koech onto the shoulder of uh, Kipruto as they go through the bell in what, about 7.07. .07. We have a real race in our hands here. The crowd enjoying this one. They do know their distance running here in Monte Carlo. It's always a feast of great middle distance races this evening and tonight no exception. Well, the uh, World Junior Champion, the reigning World Junior Champion, of course, World Junior Championship starting next week, so he'll uh, lose that title. 
but Kip Co uh, Coetz, you can never do well at the Olympic trials, never runs well at altitude, but has always got pace, Tim, and he's going to put Kiprut on some pressure over the last 200 here. Well, you saw Coetz there attack, and Kiprut respond immediately. The world championship silver medalist twice now skips over that water jump into the water, much the taller of the two. 120 to run. Who's got the change of pace here? Because they've turned this into a tactical affair. Kipiego back in third place. He's run out of it now. Kipruto ups the cadence, just eases away from Coetz there, makes it look comfortable. Almost jogging home there. Three metres to the good in 8.08. What might have been? Goodness me. One of these days, Conceslos Kipruto, who records his fifth consecutive Diamond League win there, in the steeplechase. One of these days, he's going to get it right. He's going to get great pace making. He's going to attack the distance through that middle and latter section. And he's going to go an awful long way below eight minutes. He's smiling. I think he's pleased just to have won the race in what was effectively a tactical affair. And uh, with that sort of dominance, Steve, we could well be looking at the next Olympic champion. Remember, Birec didn't get selected from the Kenyan Championships. Very real controversy over that situation in uh, Eldoret last week but that was one of the main obstacles between Kipruto and the gold who will not be in Rio well we'll be seeing uh, Ezekiel Kemboy again and um, well you know I'm a bit disappointed I mean you know we we were kind of, this race was at the end of the program it was set up as a big big race you know and Kipruto just you know he doesn't have to of course he doesn't have to but he could run eight 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 nine by running a very fast last thousand meters you know if you set it up have a go and even if it's not ideal then take it on with three laps to go and and show us how good you are that's what i would like to see and said sit back yeah he out kick coach great and i'm being hugely critical um because he's a great athlete he's a great talent let's just see it a little bit more here in monaco this is the place to run fast everybody else does so have a go well, maybe choosing to keep his powder dry and save it for Rio. The next Diamond League, of course, will be uh, in London next week. And uh, there are always quick races in London as well. As Kipruto, we see a replay there of him upping his game, smiling, cantering home in 808. Boy, oh boy, has this young lad got a big future. He's still only 21 years old, hasn't yet... Uh, hit the strap, so to speak, over the flat distances when we believe he can be world-class over 1,500 miles, 3,000, 5,000. When he does that, I'm convinced he will be a better steeplechaser and uh, will surely one day 